Today, I will present my work during my PhD study in, in University of Sydney. Uh, the topic is mainly about uh, training beam sequence design for millimeter wave tracking systems. Uh, in today's presentation, I will firstly introduce some background knowledge about millimeter wave communications. Then I will uh, describe our considered time wearing millimeter wave channel model. After that, uh, I will introduce our works for the uh, training beam sequence design uh, for beam tracking. And after that, I will give a short summary for today's presentation and uh, point some future work. Uh, firstly, let's talk about uh, what is millimeter wave communications and why we need millimeter wave communication. Um, as we know, um, in the current uh, or in the coming uh, 5G era, uh, there are various uh, data hungry applications uh, such as uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, even a uh, three-dimensional media, uh, ultra high definition transmission radio. Uh, these are, this requires very high data transmission, um, which challenges uh, the current, which challenges the current network. And uh, uh, based on a, on a report published on the second quarter, 2020 by Ericsson, they uh, estimate that the global total mobile data traffic will reach 226 exabyte per month in 2026. This, this is really a huge data traffic. Um, and for the current 4G and the first phase 5G communication systems, it will be very challenging to support such a huge data transmission requirement. To meet this explosive data rate demand, uh, the researchers from both academia or the industry has, uh, has tried their best to address many new uh, technologies, such as today's, uh, today's introduced millimeter wave communications, the massive MIMO multiple input, multiple output, all famous known as multiple antenna transmission and, and also small cell deployment uh, for duplex relaying. Uh, a lot of technologies to address this ever increasing data remand. Uh, among them, uh, the millimeter wave communications are the most promising one due to its large amount of available bandwidth. And by using millimeter wave frequency bands, we can easily achieve 10 gigabits per second peak data rates transmission, which is one of the key, one of the eight KPIs for 5G communication systems. So in millimeter wave frequency bands, uh, it ranges from approximately from 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. Within these frequency bands, there are a lot of unlicensed spectrums. And based on a report, uh, we can um, we find that this millimeter wave, the millimeter wave frequency bands can potentially provide us more than 150 gigahertz bands for data transmission. Using such a huge bandwidth, we can easily achieve the uh, 10 gigabits per second transmission. Compared with the traditional 2G, 3G, or 4G uh, communication system, all these communication systems, all of them occupy a total 780 uh, million hertz. So, uh, consequently, we can see that millimeter wave frequency bands can provide much larger bandwidth than the traditional communication systems. 
and based on the Shannon theorem, uh, we, can, we can see that the capacity the channel can provide is linearly uh, proportional to its bandwidth if we can keep the transmit, if we can keep the, as the signal to noise ratio constant. Although uh, when we actually, when we increase the bandwidth, the noise, the system experienced will also increase. Well, if we can increase the, the transmit power uh, or use the other supporting technology such as beamforming, we can keep this SNR or signal to noise ratio unchanged and make the system capacity linear increase with respect to the bandwidth. And apart from the huge bandwidth, millimeter wave communications um, have other potential gain than, the, than its conventional um, communication systems. Since um, due to the high frequency band, millimeter wave signals had very short band, uh, had very short wavelengths. And, Imagine that its frequency ranged from 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz, which correspondingly, which means that its wavelengths ranged from one, milli, one millimeter to 10 millimeter. Therefore, we can pack a huge number of antennas in an array uh, in a small area. We can put hundreds of or even thousands of antennas in the base station and um, or even tens of antennas in the handset uh, in our mobile phone. By using such a large number of antenna arrays at the, both the transmitter side and the receiver side, we can significantly um, improve the transmission. The tran the, we can significantly provide a huge transmit beamforming gain. And Consequently, improving the received SNR at the receiver side. Uh, this, these two pictures show that we can integrate uh, 200, 256 antennas in, in, a, uh, in a panel, which is comparable to a, to a coin. In, in such a small area, we can integrate so many, anten so many antennas providing a huge beamforming gain. And another aspect for multiple antennas, by using more antennas, we can generate a very narrow transmit beam, means that we can focus our transmitting signal in a small direction, which potentially avoids the information leakage, and therefore is favorable for uh, for security against uh, the possible ever dropping or jamming. Another side effect is um, with directional transmission, the influence or the co-user influence, since uh, we, we only need to transmit the signal to the, to the direction of the desired user, we can avoid the interference to the other users. Therefore, we can dense the cells. We can dense the, uh, the size of the cell, uh, which makes small cell deployment more promising. This, this is an example to show that by increasing the number of antennas from one to two to four, we can generate more narrow, uh, we can generate a narrower and narrower beams for data transmission. Um, so since we have introduced the, the benefits for millimeter wave communications, a natural question arises, uh, why we didn't use millimeter wave communications before? Uh, be, uh, by make, before making millimeter wave communications practical, we also need to solve some uh, technical challenges. The first one is it's severe path loss or propagation loss. According to the 
electromagnetic wave phase transmission formula. The path loss for electromagnetic wave, the received the path loss for, for, electro, for the electromagnetic wave is inversely proportional to the square of its frequency. Since we have greatly shifted the carrier frequency from traditional systems uh, operating under 6 GHz frequency bands to the millimeter wave frequency bands, we significantly increase the frequency bands. The consequent path loss incurred by such a high frequency bands is much higher than before. Um, another aspect by um, increasing the frequency, the, the wavelength becomes very short, becomes to millimeter wave level. Within such a small, within su uh, such a wavelength, the ability, or the, due to its very weak diffraction ability, millimeter wave signals cannot penetrate uh, cannot penetrate uh, such as the concrete walls concrete walls uh, glass uh, uh, or something like these obstacles therefore millimeter wave signals is very sensitive to blockage it is very easily to be blocked by by the walls or even by a by a person past the between the transmitter and the receiver. Uh, secondly, as we just mentioned, in millimeter wave communications, both the transmitter and the receiver have multiple antennas and we usually communicate using very narrow beam. Although we can provide a significant beamforming gain by using such a narrow beam, it also has some drawbacks it, um, with these narrow beams. We should be very careful about the beam alignment because even a small vibration or even the, the influence by a wind can, can make the antenna array, can make the direction of the antenna array change and make the, the transmit and receive beams misalignment, which will greatly influence the data transmission procedure. This shows a uh, gives a figure. So uh, with us with a uh, not a very strong wind, we need to uh, beam alignment for the transmitter and the receiver, since it will cause beam misalignment if we didn't make such a beam refinement. And another thing is, um, another thing is the. Uh, the antenna is the transmitter receive architecture. Since now millimeter wave signals has huge number of antennas, it is very difficult to increase, um, increase many RF chains into, although we can pack hundreds of antennas into a small size, it is difficult to implement the circuit in such a small area. We cannot put hundreds of hundreds of RF chains into a small size to support such a huge antenna. Therefore, in millimeter wave communications, we usually employ a much less number of RF chains compared to the antennas for uh, signal transmitting, which leads to two uh, simpler architectures, which are hybrid analog to digital architecture or analog only architecture. This, um, to show this architecture, and, and I put three figures. This one is for the traditional fully digital architecture. In traditional system, since we just have um, a dozen antennas, it is not very, the, the number of antennas are not very huge. Therefore, it is not difficult to equip each antenna or RF chain. 
and, and we call this architecture as fully digital architecture. In millimeter wave communications, as we mentioned, the number of antennas is very huge. We cannot deploy, we cannot deploy one RF chain for each antenna. Usually, we use a much less number of RF chains to support these antennas, which is termed hybrid analog to digital architecture. A, a, more, a more simple architecture is we use a simple, or we use just one RF chain to support all the antennas. And this architecture is termed analog only architecture. This analog only architecture and hybrid architecture are widely used in minimum wave communications instead of this fully digital one. And for the, um, since the analog, the analog um, circuit plays important role in the signal processing in, in, in the signal processing as detailed below, um, we just expand a little uh, a bit here. For the analog circuit, it consists of a digital to analog converter an up converter and also a series of phase shifters. This is for the transmitter side. For the receiver side, it also consists of a set of phase shifters, but it, this becomes the, the down converter and the analog to digital converter. The most important role is the phase shifter. Um, by adjusting the phase of these phase shifters, we can we can do beamforming or do the other uh, pre-coding technologies in the data transmission. Apart from the uh, path loss penetration narrow beam of this hybrid architecture, the other problem for millimeter wave communication is its uh, is a possible hardware impairment due to the high carrier frequency millimeter wave systems are more sensitive to the phase noise or the IQ imbalance and the other hardware problems and, and that is conventional communication system counterparts. Now we make a, a summary for the new characteristics introduced by the millimeter wave communications due to, the, due to its severe propagation loss, penetration loss, and directional transmission reception. The channels for millimeter wave communication are very sparse, and usually only a few propagation paths exist between the millimeter wave transmitter and the receiver. Uh, the, here we give a simpler millimeter wave channel. In, in, a, in this channel, it consists of only L paths between the transmitter and the receiver. And this represents the scatters. The second part is the, uh, the hardware architecture. So we, we have just mentioned due to the expensive or the practical implementation of these RF chains and they are incurred high power consumption. We cannot employ, we cannot employ fully digital architecture as in the conventional communication systems. Instead, we can only use hybrid analog to digital or even analog only architecture for the millimeter wave communications. Um, these new channel characteristics and the hardware architecture will influence the signal processing for the channel estimation procedure and data transmission procedure. We will expand this in um, in in our in the second in our second section. Before that, we firstly introduce the time varying channel model, which raises the problem for beam tracking. We take a millimeter wave MISO channel as an example to introduce my work for its simplicity. Uh, consider a MISO channel where a transmitter equipped with a uniform linear antenna array communicates with a single antenna receiver and consider only the line offside path. 
this is a channel uh, represented by H and N NT represents the total number of antennas for this uniform linear array. An alpha here is the channel gain, which means that the signal transmitted from the transmitter to the receiver, how much loss it incurred. And this part is the array response vector for this uniform linear array, it's corresponding antenna array response is can be written in such a form. Um, considering such a channel model, and recall that we um, we can adjust the the phase the phase shift by properly uh, by properly adjusting the phase shifts for each phase shifter. We can concentrate the transmit signal to the direction of the desired user as shown um, in this polar figure by adjusting, sorry, by properly adjust the phase of each phase shifter in this form, we can concentrate or transmit the signal to the direction of this desired user. This represents the possible antenna gain in the, uh, in the whole angular space. We can see that um, we, uh, by, using, by, using, by adjusting the phase shift into this form, we can focus on the transmit signal into the user's direction and the signal radiating to the other directions are very low. Such technology is termed beamforming, which is the enabling technology for millimeter wave communications. Let's see if we uh, design the phase shifter into another form. For example, if we, if we randomly choose the phase shifts from zero to two pi, we can see their corresponding, uh, their possible radiation patterns. Apart from the direction of the desired user, the transmit signal also leak, uh, also uh, leakaged to the other directions. It will introduce interference to the other to the other users receiving signal. And also for security reason, it will cause some information leakage for possible information leakage, avoiding potential security issues. Although this uh, such a beam pattern is not favorable for data transmission, it is beneficial for the possible beam training because um, uh, when I talk about beam training, I mean that we didn't know the direction of the user. We wish to efficiently find the direction of the user as soon as possible. Therefore, we wish to uh, broadly expand, in, transmit the signals, the pilot signals to the, to the whole direction. And such a beam pattern lays a foundation to the uh, subsequent beam training process. Now, uh, we have introduced the concept of beamforming. And in reality, the mobile user can move from time to time, as shown in this figure. At the previous time slot, the user is located in, the, in an angle of departure of theta in this direction. After several time slots, the position of this user can be changed. For example, it can move to this direction, to an angle of departure, to, to theta two the direction. If we didn't adjust the, if we didn't adjust the, the phase shifters, or if we didn't change the beamforming direction, in this direction, the user now cannot receive the transmit signal very efficiently. We can see that the 
the transmit being forming again in this direction is very low. Therefore, we have to update or re-estimate the channel of the user frequently to make sure beam alignment from time to time to enable data transmission. And to model the temporal variations of the receiver, we consider a quantized model. We introduce a beam codebook matrix, and which physically means that we quantize the whole angular space into a set of quantized points. And we assume that the mobile user can only move from one quantization point to the other. Uh, following a discrete Markov process. And for example, we assume that the user um, can only move from one beam direction to the other um, from time to time. If the user um, moves, um, if, if the user moves with, I, I'm, um, I have to point out that if, the user is covered by the same beam between two dot between two transmission block, although its position can change a bit. For example, uh, for example, shown here, although the position of the user change a bit between two transmission block, they are covered by the same beam. We, uh, in this case, we still think that. The position, uh, we still think that the position of the user unchanged because uh, from the perspective of the beam direction, because although its position or its location changed a bit, they are served by the same beam. We mean that uh, from the beam direct, from the beam perspective, the user's position are unchanged. Only the user's position changed from one beam to another, we term it changed. And we use this transition probab probability model to correct the, the use to, to, to correct to characterize the temporal variation of the uh, of the uh, of angle of departure. Seen from this model, uh, we mean that we we wish we would like to explain the this transition probability, which means that we assume that the the user still has a higher probability to return in its current transmission uh, in, in its in its previous angle of departure, and the probability to a far away direction decreases. Means the probability. I mean that the probability becomes less. I mean that the a uh, far away, a uh, far away, change for two consequent transmission block. There is a, there is a very less probability that the angle of departure changes far away from its previous transmission block. And. Um, we have introduced the necessity of the, the beam tracking. Now we introduce the, the corresponding beam protocol. At each data transmission, at each, at the beginning of each transmission block, we need to send some pilot symbols using a sequence, using a sequence of transmit beam forming vector to update the channel before the data transmission. In the first transmission block, since we didn't, we have no prior information, we should use a large number of pilots to estimate the whole channel or estimate the, the initial position of the user. Well, at the subsequent transmission blocks, since we have, we have already known the initial position of the user, we can use such a information and the associated transition probability. We, we, do, we can only 
by using such by using such private information, we we can use less number of pilot symbols to reestimate the the channels for the subsequent transmission blocks. Therefore, from the second transmission block, we do not need to use as many as as many number as many pilot symbols as in the first transmission block. And the the procedure from the circuit transmission block to the procedure from circuit transmission block is termed beam tracking. Um, we have introduced the architecture incurred by millimeter wave communications. This architecture has also has some impact on the signal processing techniques, as we mentioned earlier. Here we mathematically we write their influence. For the analog only architecture, we have only one action to control the phase shifters. Therefore, with using such an architecture, we can only change the phase of the transmitter signal. In contrast, for the fully digital architecture, we can change either the amplitude or the phase of the transmitter signal. For the hybrid analog digital architecture, it can be decomposed into two parts, the analog part and the digital part. For the analog part, we only change the phase of each. We only change the phase of the phase shifter. For the digital part, we can change both the amplitude and the phase of the transmitter signals. Now we um, introduce two representative training beam sequence design approach in my work. Uh, before introducing that, we, we briefly introduce the exhaustive search as a, the, the, the simple exhaustive search method as a benchmark. We kindly clarify that although this exhaustive search is simple, it is used in the current uh, Wi-Fi system. To be specific, for this exhaustive search method, we use narrow beams to search the angular space in a sequential manner in order to find the position of the user's direction, uh, in order to find the position of the user. And to be specific, in the first pilot transmission duration, we use the first, we, we use the first narrow beam to probe the first beam direction. Uh, suppose the user direction is in this direction. By using such a beam, the receiver cannot, uh, at this direction, we cannot read. The received signal in this direction is very less. For the circular beam, for the circular beam, since it can be aligned with the user's direction, it can receive, the user now can receive a stronger signal in this direction. Uh, similarly, for the second and third direction, since they are not aligned with the true direction of the user, we can imagine that the received signals in these two part, in these two slots are also very weak. By, uh, by doing such a searching, we can eventually find the strong direction. We can eventually find the, the user's direction, which is the direction that can return the strongest received signal in the whole angular space. In millimeter wave communications, the beam are very narrow and therefore to search in order to search the whole angular space, we need a lot of times, we, we need a lot of time slots to cover the whole angular space, which is not very efficient and unfavorable for uh, for a communication system because um, we we have to spend a large number of pilot symbol durations for for beam training. 
and, and therefore uh, less symbol durations for data transmission. In our work, actually, and we, we have tried our best to improve the beam training efficiency to reduce the training overhead and leading a higher spectrum efficiency. In my previous work, I, I mainly considered two um, estimators. The first one is a power-based estimator. Uh, the second one is the post probability based estimator. Uh, I explain a bit details about these two estimators. For the, for the power-based estimator, we transmit several, we transmit, uh, we, we measure, we probe the whole beam, we probe the whole angular space several times by using training beam forming vectors. And we take, we take the true direction or, or, or the direction which can return the highest received signal as a true direction of the user. Well, for the post probability based method, we, um, the, the direction that can um, return the maximum post probability, we, we term the direction that can return maximum post probability as the direction of the true AO, the true direction of the user. And for the training beam sequence, we, we, also, we, we can also, we consider also two different kinds of training beam sequence. The one is for code book based training beam sequence. The other one is the non code book based training beam sequence. And also considering the, and considering the, the architecture analog only hybrid, we, we can, we have uh, considered different settings for our beam tracking systems. So the first one is, for example, we have we have done a power-based estimator considering code book based training beam sequence with analog only <coughs> architecture in our work, in, in our work, uh, in two works, in two works, and also the post probability estimator with code book based method and hybrid structure. Uh, so we have considered the possible, we have considered the several beam tracking strategies for different, for, for different uh, millimeter wave systems. And in, in this section, we just uh, introduced two representative one, two representative beam tracking approach. The first one is a post probability with code book based training beam sequence and hybrid analog digital architecture. When we term hybrid analog architecture, we mean that the transmitter has multiple RF chains and therefore we, at each pilot symbol duration or at each time slot, we can generate several narrow beams instead of only one as in the exhaustive search. At each pilot symbol duration, we generate four narrow beams at the other symbol durations, we can generate we generate the uh, the other four different beams, different beams, and so on. Uh, considering this backhead graph, in each pilot symbol duration, we can generate four narrow beams, and uh, therefore probing four possible directions simultaneously, and. Uh, and, and if we have M, total number of M pilot symbol durations, we can do M measurements. And each measurement, we measure multiple directions by approximately, by approximately design the beam patterns for each pilot symbol duration. We possibly, I mean that if we can design the, the structure of this bipartite graph, we can efficiently, we, or we can finally find the true direction of the current user. Here, uh, suppose this is a previous, di previous direction of the user. 
and in the current transmission block, it changes from this direction to this direction. And when we do when we do a measurement, we can observe this information in we can observe this information in our received signal. And by by decoding such a structure, we can find the true, we can find its direction. Here is the I, I give some I give its performance. In our work, we I, I proposed uh, two mathematical. I introduced two mathematical tools to design the structure of such a peptide graph. The first one is a, a convex optimization tool. It is called sequen sequential quadratic programming, and the other one is is a gradient method termed. Uh, progress edge growth algorithm compared with the exhaustive search, which is named the one after chain and, and highly directional beam here, and it, which it needs um, 31,000, uh, it needs 31 uh, measurements by using, by using uh, multiple narrow beams at each pattern symbol duration. We only need a half number of the exhaustive search method to achieve a comparable performance. And here, and we, we write more clearly with respect to the total number of training beams by using multiple narrow beams or by simultaneously transmitting multiple narrow beams. We can, when we, um, we, we use only 16 number of pilot symbol durations to achieve a comparable performance with the with the uh, 30 with the narrow beams with only half a number of training beams therefore we can lead more symbol durations for data transmission the second approach is the non-code book based training beam sequence also the hybrid analog to digital architecture um, the main contribution there is we, we can finally transform the training beam sequence design problem into an optimization problem. Here F represents the M training beam sequence to be optimized. We construct, we firstly construct an optimization problem. We find, we can, uh, we firstly assume, we firstly assume the millimeter waves, we, firstly, we firstly assume it is a fully digital architecture. We can, um, we solve um, this optimization problem, find, find a fully digital, find the optimal training beam sequence F. And after that, we use the hybrid analog beamforming to approximate this F because here, this F is a fully digital set and um, is, F is a fully digital one. We have to, we can, we can use hybrid analog digital uh, precoding to approximate this F with very, with negligible performance loss. This is corresponding performance. Uh, compared with the benchmarks, the proposed approach is very efficient. And um, we kindly clarify that this one is, is an oracle scheme, which means that we, we, we use more information than, than the proposed approach. We just uh, put this, this scheme as a benchmark. Now we summarize today's, um, today's talk um, in, in my presentation, I have introduced what is minimum wave communication. And why we use why we use it. And subsequently, we introduce the beamforming technology, which is the enabling technology for millimeter wave communications. And after that, I pre provide the our proposed beam tracking protocol and the training beam sequence design approach. Uh, in my future work, um, I proposed to, to, to push forward my current work. Considering more practical constraints, uh, for example, we can consider um, um, 
a much lower cost hardware. We consider the low resolution analog phase shifters. And currently we assume the phase shifter is, uh, is ideal. The, the, the phase shift of the phase shifters can change continuously from zero to pi. But actually the phase shifter cannot, um, we, we can only change the phase shifter into, into a discrete set of possible phase. The, the other direction is um, we in the, the transition, pro, transition, the primary transition probability here. And um, in my previous work, we assume the transition probability is already available, which is impractical or very difficult to obtain in practical transmission systems. Uh, we find that we can we can resort to a deep reinforcement learning framework to remove such a strong assumption. And another promising techno another promising direction is we uh, instead of considering such a generic uh, the generic time varying channel model, we can consider a more specific network. We can consider the can consider this vehicle network and the, the intelligent car or the, or the self-driving car has some data need to communicate with uh, the base station or terminal road side unit located at the road. Uh, we also, in, in order to communication, they also need to do beam tracking and beam, beam alignment. We can consider such a specific network in, in my future work. And another uh, dire another po possible direction is the uh, is the positioning. Since um, after beam tracking, uh, we know the direction we know the direction of the of the car, and using using the coordinates of the road sand unit and the and the speed of this car, we can approximately locate. The, 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 car, the position of these cars or objects. So these are all promising, these are all promising works um, which can, can be done in my future work. Okay, to, uh, okay uh, that's, that's all for today's presentation. Thank you for your listening.